Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody. It is a privilege to be with you today and visit Puskas land and Mesaro's land with whom I could cultivate a friendship at the end of their life. They were they were very sometimes visiting our school, a couple of times visiting our school. And and I respect their I they I am going to break with the intellectual property. He he gave us the property rights of his knowledge to our movement. We grab ideas and we we share the books to our people in our for our people. I am, I'm sorry, I don't speak English because here we have uh, we are sectarian with the language of the empire. I will speak Spanish because it's the language of our elders. I I have shared with Bruno a couple of documents in English that he will he will share with you. We will share with you with where you will find more detail. I would like to make a brief introduction of our movement for those of you who don't know you. We are an organization, a social organization, a popular organization, a peasant. 35 years ago, we are fighting for the land and agrarian reform. We, we, we grew for the in the in the context of democratization and fight against against dictatorship and we have fought these 30 years and we have been born under Emiliano Zapata's signature because in Latin America all fights for land in the 20th century they were influenced by Zapata's the land for those who work it and that and that say marked all of land movements and not only in Brazil but all Latin America and there was a political conception and social to share land to have to attend the necessities of reproduction in the for the peasants and we have done this like like this we have work like this and we have developed um, social struggles, massive social fights to fight against. We have developed more than 5,000 water treatment plants. We have made very uh, important national rallies, we we salute, we salute the uh, Andean uh, peasantry um, um, demonstrations and uh, movements because they do, they have this, the result of this um, three decades is 5,000 states that we own where now we live. This is our base. The second uh, topic is that along this fight, we have we have acknowledged that there have been many structural changes, and that Zapatist uh, consigns could only transform in a classic land reform as it has occurred in all the North Hemisphere, as in Japan, only if there is an alliance between the, the peasantry and the, uh, the bourgeois. But now, the capitalism in our continent is not dominated by the industrial bourgeois, but it is dominated by big transnational corporations and financial capital. Here in Brazil, there are 55 
enterprises that control the whole agriculture, agro business, capitalism, or agribusiness, or a percent uh, agriculture. This new reality is structural of capitalism is not making possible a classical land reform, not because peasantry do not want land, but because industrial bourgeois was not interested in, in sharing land and develop local um, market um, and local industries for local market. So we have to acknowledge the reality and adjust our program. Uh, 10 years ago, we have been working and actualization in a, an updating in, of our agrarian program facing this new reality. And we are trying to push new forms of productive organization in our areas. And we are trying to look forward to what we want, what kind of changes we want in, in the in in agriculture and in villages. But it's more important, it's more important to fight the model of capitalism, not only latifundio. Here in, in Latin America appears as agro-business. In, 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 in Latin America, this concept of agro-business is not just a concept that Americans invented, but is a model, is a model that puts the control of big transnationals and big capitals. Our land is controlled by them. Here, uh, big estates uh, that manage agribusiness have more than 5,100 hectares uh, in, one, in one company. This is, um, this is a, a, a big problem. It's a crime against people. After a big debate, based in our experience, based in the structural changes. And in our social struggle principles, and in our dreaming of a new uh, egalitarian and just society, we agreed on a popular land reform Because in general, in academia, like we're here, we we talk we talk about land reform generally in academia in, as a classic land reform that was carried by that was carried by um, an industrial bourgeois. Uh, but it, this is not happening. Uh, a popular land reform has to care for the interests of all the people. And not only for those, for those of for the peasants. And this is why we're building new paradigms, new objectives that we need to fight for, that are more, that are broader than just the the, the conquest of the land to work. The, the first, the most important, yes, it is the most to, to acquire the to acquire the land to our to work, but not just for that, but also for political power, social power, uh, the power to reproduce our culture. The second paradigm is it is only viable uh, land reform if it has an objective to produce food for the whole population, for the whole people. So it's a principle of um, food sovereignty in our people, and not just every food, because ultra processed food is not food, it's just, it's just uh, commodities to, to put in the market. We want to produce healthy foods. And in order to produce healthy animals, the, the third, uh, I propose our third paradigm, which is agroecology, which is the possibility to produce healthy food 
in equilibrium with nature. The next point is to guarantee the defense of nature. Peasants, when they, ha when they will have the land, as, as the song says, as our Uruguayan singer song says, we, we should be fighters of nature. The colleague just talked about, talk about environment. And right now there are 134,000 species in extinction in our planet. And it is a problem about survival in our in our in our world. And the only way to survive is to defend nature. We should oppose. We should oppose. We should uh, we should follow um, water defense and uh, and uh, forest reserves. Only forests and water can can stand upon capitalism. We have incorporated all these ideas in our program, in our land popular land reform. It is not just land for the ghosts who work it, it's land to protect it, to pr it's water to protect it. In, in, in 10 years, nobody has a speak has a speak of water as a as a as a as a food resource it was spoke as a as a infinite resource but but now all enterprises nestle coca cola are having more profit by marketing water than what they produce this is why we have we have incorporated this also agro Ecologia. In our faculties, agro, uh, in our agronomy faculties, they don't understand agroecology because they only work for capitalist big states. And here we are making a big effort to adequate, to change uh, new courses, new, new education courses to new types of knowledge that includes agroecology. We also incorporate the idea of agro industry as Nestle and Coca-Cola, but a different type. Um, we don't see we don't see the enemy as an agro industry. Um, it is necessary. It is necessary, and we because it's a, it's, a, it's a matrix of production, but it has to be cooperative. It has to be, it has to be led by, by the peasants. It has to be, agroindustry is the only way to maintain the peasants in the fields, young and women, no young, no young, no youth. No youth, a youth wants to work, wants to study. Then the popular reform is to support, support youngs, support new sources of work that can only, that can only work with a cooperative agro industry. There is a necessity to mechanize the agriculture. There is also a lot of prejudice in this because we think we cannot make agro industry mechanizing and techno in introducing technology in, in agriculture, but it is necessary because it reduces human sacrifice. sacrifice. Uh, work in the fields after mining is the most sacrificing type of work in the world. Mechanizing and industrializing saves energy and gives uh, more better con better conditions to peasantry. And we should introduce technologies since um, in all the in all agricultural process. 
our governments do not do not intend to technify and introduce technologies uh, in peasantry for the peasants, but only they do for corporations to private corporations. They they look into uh, into enhancing um, different type of capital. And, and this is the last remark. We have to defend education. We gather from Jose Martin, father of Latin American nation from the beginning of 20th century and all of the big philosophers that they, that, that, that defended this consign. All just, it is only knowledge that can liberate people. You cannot give you cannot give land and industry and and technology to to ignorant uh, peasants. We have to bring education to the fields in all levels, from alphabetization. Here we still have fourteen million workers that are still anal analphabet analphabet. We also had a program to include the peasant youth in universities, and we have included five. We have already graduated five thousand youth in different fields in uh, pedagogy, medicine, veterinary, and agriculture sciences. I uh, will finish. This is our program. It is very clear. It's a anti-capital, anti-capitalistic program. Is an anti-capitalistic program. We don't know how the future will be. We don't like this idea of social. This is this debate of socialism and communism. This is not helping. The, what is fundamental is to is to get rid of capitalism. What will come after is the the, the future generations that will that will get rid of capi capitalism will put the name to it. But they will not come just from the peasant struggle, from the peasant fight, but all, we also need that they come from the democratic state. Without the democratic state, there won't be change. We need organized forces in society from the proletariat, from society, from academia, that will allow us to build a new popular national post-capitalist program. These are our ideas. Thank you for the opportunity to share. And 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 Viva Huskas, and I'm sorry for the bad football, for the bad football selection of Hungary.